Hello everyone, welcome to the characterization facility of School of Nano Science and Technology IIT Kharagpur. I am Sreoshi Dash. Today we are going to discuss about the Raman spectroscopy. So at first we are going to discuss about the basic principles of Raman spectroscopy. So what is spectroscopy? Spectroscopy is the study of the way electromagnetic radiation and matter affects each other. It tends to involve breaking of EM radiation into counterparts which called as the spectrum. Spectroscopy is used as a tool for studying the spectrum of atoms and molecules. It also provides a precise analytical method for finding the constituents in a material having unknown chemical composition. Spectroscopy completely depends on the interaction of light with matter. If light falls on a sample, different type of interactions can be possible. One is the absorption of the light, one is the scattering of light and some part of light can get transmitted. Using these different components of light, different type of spectroscopy techniques have been discovered like the absorption spectroscopy, emission spectroscopy and the scattering spectroscopy. Raman spectroscopy is based on the inelastic light scattering in a material where the incident light interacts with the chemical bond within the material. The principle of Raman spectroscopy is based on the Raman effect named after Indian physicist C. V. Raman who was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1930 for the discovery of the same. When the incident light is scattered by molecule, the oscillating electromagnetic field of the photon induces a polarization of the molecule electron cloud. This leaves the molecule in a higher energy state with the energy of the photon transferred to the molecule. This can be considered as the formation of a very short lived complexes between the photon and the molecule which is commonly called the virtual state of the molecule. Here you can see that the first captured uh, Raman spectra by C. V. Raman. Also in a, here you can see the typical Raman spectra where the intense Raman peak is the Rayleigh peak and in the right side of the Rayleigh peak uh, there are some peaks which are called as the strokes lines and in the left side there are some peaks which are called as the anti-strokes lines. So what is the origin behind these peaks? It depends on the molecular vibration. A molecular vibration is a periodic motion of the atoms of a molecule relative to each other such that the center of mass of the molecule remains unchanged. A fundamental vibration is evoked when one quantum of energy is absorbed by the molecule in its ground state. An incident photon of energy H nu raises the molecule from a vibrational state to one of the infinite number of virtual states located between the ground and the first electronic states. The type of the scattering observed is depend on how the molecule relaxes after excitation. Rayleigh scattering occurs when the molecule is excited to any virtual state and relaxes back to its original state. This elastic scattering is the most common transition. In a much rarer event, Raman scattering occurs which is the inelastic scattering process. The stroke scattering occurs when molecule is excited to any virtual state and relaxes back to a higher vibrational state than it had originally and the photon loses energy. And the anti-stroke scattering occurs when the molecules begin in a vibrationally excited state. It is excited to any virtual state and relaxes back to a lower vibrational state than it had originally and the photon gains energy. So which modes are actually Raman active? Raman activity is the measure of the polarizability of a bond in an electric field. This factor essentially depends how easy is for, uh, is for the electron in the bond to be displaced inducing a temporary dipole. When there is a large concentration of loosely held electron in a bond, the polarizability is also large and the molecule will have an intense Raman signal. Here you can see these three modes are Raman active modes because they have the change in polarizability ellipsoid. So 
there are huge applications in the uh, in different fields of raman spectroscopy in the pharmaceutical and cosmetic industries raman spectroscopy is widely used to determine the compound distribution in tablets doses and content uniformity and contaminants identifications etc in the geology and mineralogy de departments gemstone and mineral identification phase distribution in rock sections and different mineral behavior determination under extreme conditions are analyzed using raman spectroscopy further in the photonics and optoelectronic industries characterization of different semiconductor materials their intrinsic strain doping defect analysis is investigated using raman spectroscopy recently raman spectroscopy has also been widely investigated for tracking ultrafast structural dynamics of materials via tami time domain raman analysis further raman spectroscopy has huge applications in biomedical field like here you can see the real time molecular imaging of the near surface tissue can be done using raman spectroscopy also level free monitoring of cytotoxic response can be done using raman spectroscopy so here you can see the digital image of the raman microscopy system installed in our lab this system usually consists of three components one is the microscope column consists of the motorized stage objectives few filters light source and the video camera the another major component is the lasers which act as the monochromatic light source and the finally for the detection of the raman signal one spectrometer is there which consists of few gratings and the charge couple detector this is a comfocal raman microscope from vitec so as we have discussed earlier in the instrumentation section that the raman microscopy it actually consists of a microscope column lasers and spectrometer in the microscope column we have a motorized stage for the x y z movement of our sample and one light source to illuminate the sample and the high definition video camera to capture the real time image of our samples then two lasers are here one is 532 nanometer another is 633 nanometer both of them are solid state lasers and they are coupled to this microscope column using this fiber couplers the collected raman signals were sent to the spectrometer via this photonic crystal fiber and then inside this spectrometer we have three gratings one is uh, 300 gross per mm another is 600 gross per mm and one is 1200 gross per mm so if you want to get a higher resolution you have to go for the higher group density finally the signals were sent to the charge couple device here and we will get the corresponding raman spectrum for the demonstration part we have cvd grown mus2 samples on sio2 wafer and we have used this raman spectroscopy to characterize this two dimensional material so first we have to mount this sample on the stage and fix it using this two clamps we have four objective lenses to focus the sample properly and few filters are there to block the rally line after that you can use this remote controller to move your sample in the x y and z direction for the positioning and the focusing so this is the triangular flex of mos2 on sio2 substrate after aligning the laser on the sample we have to switch from the bright field mode to the laser mode and then we have to take out the video camera and open the laser shutter after opening the laser shutter we will see a bright spot of laser will fall on the sample and then we can take the raman spectrum now in the software we have to first select the grating so here i am selecting the 1200 gross per mm grating and then we have to select the spectral center according to the peak position of, of our samples after that you have to have to go for the single spectrum option here we can select the integration time as well as the number of accumulation then by clicking on the accumulate single spectrum button we can take the raman spectrum of this mos2 flex 
so this is the raman spectrum of the as grown nemo is to flex here you can see these two peaks are the characteristics uh, peaks of the mo is to one is e2g1 another is a1g peak so another thing we can do here is the large area scan so um, for that we have to go for the large area scan option here you can select the area by clicking the area once option so by clicking here you can select the area on which you want to take the raman mapping image then you have to um, select the integration time you need and you can start the large area scan i have already taken one large area scan of this flex and here you can see that the mohs to characteristic peak is coming only from this triangular section other than that portion the the peak is not coming so th in this way you can also characterize your sample further we have done the mapping uh, on a biological sample so this is the bright field image of a cell and we have taken the raman mapping of this selected area here so as you can see this is the raman spectrum of the cell and all of these peaks are coming due to different biomolecules present in the cell here you can see there is a strong peak around 1650 cm inverse which is coming due to the amide group present in the cell and another peak is coming at 900 cm inverse uh, which is uh, coming due to the nucleic acid present in the cell so he, here you can see the amide group is uh, coming from whole cell but the nucleic acid is coming only from this section of the cell so from this you can also say the nucleus of the cell is concentrated in that portion only hope you have enjoyed the video thank you